Hey everybody, this is Sheets, I'm, and I'm with Michael Brayhawk, Bray Jayhawk Jensen to discuss uh, the results from week nine in Survivor and start talking about week 10 and beyond. Um, keep forgetting, uh, for those of you that are interested, we do have a nice little Discord channel on my TrueDFS channel if you want to join that. If any of you are still alive in Survivor or still just want to learn, um, we're, uh, we're trying to be as active as possible with that. Um, so going back to week number nine, um, I ended up, uh, as we recall, I'm in two pools, one that's already in doubles every week and another, which is kind of a hybrid it's in singles now. Um, but if there is, we don't get a lot of carnage before week 16, it goes into doubles then, uh, depending on how many are left. So as some of you might recall, it was a weird week last week because there were two teams that were pretty big favorites, but everybody was picking them. And you could have made the argument to kind of fade them both. Um, uh, and, and Mike, uh, at the time of the podcast, made a very, very nice uh, argument for fading them both. And to, the, to that point also, he made it a pretty good argument to even fade the popular fade team, which would have been uh, Atlanta. And we talked about that at length. And uh, I suggest, not suggested, but my kind of counter was that it kind of like depends on what where you know, what, what, your, your run out is and what pools you're in or whatever. And I was thinking that we were going to go a little more conservative and play Baltimore, which I thought was like kind of like the lock. And I'm looking at, at the week nine EV rankings before I go to week 10. So Baltimore was, was the only like top favorite team that actually was playable because it was no, it was low owned. Um, and then I thought about it and, and I was suggesting that maybe because we have a really good run out, especially in doubles that we should probably just, eat Cleveland. And, and then what happened is um, after we finished the podcast with the rest of the course of the week, the entire Arizona team just went into a state of freaking dismay and the line ended up racing all the way up to 13. Okay. Which just basically just said, well, as uh, Emily Littell, you said in, in Saturday Night Live, never mind. You know, like at, yeah. at that point it was just, it was just, it was just useless to not take the free card. So what we ended up doing, um, we did go with Baltimore and Cleveland in uh, in, in the double pick pool. Ne neither game was ever a sweat. We got a chance to root against the Saints for a while, um, right through the fourth quarter, and they were really, really popular, but they ended up surviving. And we made, uh, I mean, what I thought was kind of a very, pretty weak play. We actually went Cleveland in the single pick pool, too. Um, and I just kind of lost an argument there with that one. But we, ac we actually have a lot of good save teams in the, in the single pick pool. Uh, for a good run out later. So listen, we, we, we got away with a bad EV play in single pick. Um, and, uh, but we didn't cost us anything because we're never going to really use, well, we could use Cleveland later, obviously now, yeah. but, but anyway, that's, that's where, where, where we're at. Uh, why don't you talk about, obviously you're not in anything. Why don't you talk about your, your analysis and how it changed if it did, I know it did because I saw you tested me, whatever. Um, uh, uh, in week nine, and then we'll go ahead and start and talk about week 10. Yeah, it was really a bummer. Uh, it was, it was really, it, it seemed very, it was very clear cut to me what direction I would have gone in. But then when I saw Arizona trade Dobbs away and then have to go to someone that I've, you know, I've never heard of that changed the spread, the spread uh, drastically. And it, it really go, but there's two things to that. Yes, they become more popular, but also, I mean, I'm sorry, higher favorited, but they also become more popular. And again, it's still a team yeah. that if your pool is going to go to the distance, yeah. this is a team, Cleveland, that you really want to have. And if your pool happens to have doubles starting up at the end of the season, yeah. you would really, you really need Cleveland. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you could, if you can have them, if, if your pool, for example, has, doubles in like 16, 17, 18, or 15, 16, 17, having Cleveland for there, in, invaluable. I don't know what I would have done. If, uh, I was so set on what I wanted. And then, but it, it gets to the point where the spread moves so much. I, I mean, even I started to change my mind a little bit. I, I told one of my friends, I would, I would just, I, I would just take Cleveland in, in, in his spot. I had one friend reach out, and I sent you this too. If, do you want to go over this now or later? That's pretty. Go for it. Well, just I guess we'll just do it now. Uh, I, had, I had a poker friend reach out to me, 
and it's the first time he's reached out to me all year and said, who should I pick this week? And I had our, we'd already done the podcast. So I had my, I'm glad I was so articulate with my rankings because I gave him who my favorite team was. And I knew it happened to be his favorite team, which was new England. Unfortunately, all three of the other teams won and new England was the only one that lost. Right now. I didn't talk to him again after I told him what I would do in his spot. And on Sunday afternoon, he sent me a screenshot of the pick distribution from his pool. And it was a dandy. It was, you know, more or less like 70 people left. And it was like 40 something on Cleveland, 20 something on New Orleans. And then one person, him on New England, no one else was picked. Oh my God. This was an absolute dream scenario and what I told my other friend was I would probably just bail out and take Cleveland anyway but I was I don't know what I would have done if if it was me I, I I turned my brain off to it but when the spread moves even more it's gonna make the the pick percentage even higher and again it's a team that you'd like to have and it worked out perfect for my other friend. I mean, he lost, but what an uh, he had a three way three team parlay to win his pool this week. You know, it, it would have happened yeah. two and a half, three yeah. percent of the time. But the other way to look at it is, if he had just won, he would have been the only person the pool right. left with New Orleans and Cleveland. Yeah. Huge advantage. Yeah. If one of them had lost, one of the other teams had lost. Huge. He would have been the only person left with that team that won. Yeah. And that would have been. A, an absolutely enormous advantage and because you know it's because we looked ahead i mean there are just spots where those teams are extremely live playable and serve as incredible leverage so those are those and, and, and you, you'd be alone on an island with that team and, and in all like in some in some uh likelihood it'd be the best pick i mean could you can you imagine can you imagine if he if he got away with that and let's say new orleans won cleveland lost and and he's left having New Orleans available in like fourteen when no one's got Baltimore left. Cincinnati will be burned in ten and twelve before then. Oh yeah. Detroit will be burned if they weren't already. San Francisco's already gone. You know what I mean? Miami will be gone by then. Charles and and, and week and week fifteen too. I mean, a lot those yeah. teams are not going to be available. Cincinnati yeah. will be heavily picked in three weeks prior. He would yeah. have been just yeah. winning. Would have would have been a great spot. Instead, he gets he gets to cash. He gets to put his uh, Sklansky dollars into the bank. Yep. And uh, he moves on to wait, wait again next Green, year. To greener pastures, so to speak. So let's let's talk about this week. And again, at the usual disclaimers that there's a lot of picks that are just, boy, that would be nice if I could pick them, but nobody, but you don't have them available, right? Um, so why don't we start again with the way, the way we did it last week? So why don't you just start with what you would do, like maybe regardless of pool, regardless of whatever, because – it looks yeah. to, for me. I'm I'm like forced into literally two or three options, and and we'll we'll get to those when we when we get to my specific pool. But but give me. I mean, you want you could you could start with Dallas, like the highest percentage team. You could start with maybe Cincinnati, who's kind of you know uh, you know decent decent uh, win percentage, but but flooded throughout the uh, the pools. Uh, you you take it away, however you want to start. Okay. What I did was now it's at the point where. I, I need to get a clear idea of what people are working with. Right. Like if I was still in, what do I actually, what, who have I used? This isn't the best way to do it, but I went to one of the pools I play in and I just started crossing out on survivor grid. M- m- maybe a few entries have picked all of these teams, but most entries have used most of them. And I, and I crossed out Kansas city San Francisco, Detroit, Seattle, Miami, Buffalo, and Baltimore. Now, maybe a couple people used all those, but I doubt anyone has four of them. And right. most lo- most likely, you know, maybe people have two or three of them, just to get a you know, little visual of what's going of of what's going on here. So, this is a week where I would ne- I would spend almost no time on my decision. I would take Dallas and be done with it. I yep. wouldn't even think about it. I very similar to my logic for weeks two and three when I liked San Francisco and Kansas City. They were the highest favorite team that week. It was a team with 
they're, they're both teams with great value, but I didn't, you know, it, it was that or I dropped down to a seven or eight point favor, which is fine. I mean, I like doing that, but I, I liked what I, what I had in the other weeks where you'd like to have those teams. And Dallas is a three game stretch. That's it. I wouldn't look past that. Weeks 10, 11, 12, that's when you're using Dallas. If you, if you haven't used them at, if, if you get to 12, you, you really just have to pick, you have to take them. So what I'm looking at is what would I be taking if I did not have Dallas? You don't even have so, to do that because people have Dallas and, and, and I, I got some bad. Well, I, no, I, I mean, if I, if you take Dallas now, what are you going to take for 11 and 12? Well, it, I, it, I, I have, I'll tell you what, I have something more interesting then because, because, because in my single pick pool, we're just taking Dallas. We're taking the freak. We have all kinds of good stuff we can run out with anyway. What I think yeah. is a more interesting thing is is well. Let, let me say one more thing. Go ahead, this go ahead. is where you have a sixteen and a half point favorite in Dallas, and if you're not taking Dallas, you at best you're taking a seven point favorite. So you're dropping nine points in point spread. Well, so ne- so, so next so, week, next week, if you if you needed da- if you need Dallas for eleven, right? Well, they're a nine point favorite. All things being equal, considering it a two-week slate, you can take a pick 'em game in eleven in Dallas now, and you're getting the same win percentage odds than if you take Cincinnati this week and Dallas next week. Your your advanced percentages, because you have to win both of them, are are more or less exactly the same. So I would rather drop next week and then just take the and, and their options next, and their week. options next week. I mean, you could it's possible people have Washington left, you know, it's possible that they have Jackson, well, probably have Jacksonville left. Um, and, and but Houston, but, e- but even play. taking Denver at two and a half, it comes down to you need to win both games. And right. if you take Dallas this week and Denver as a two-point favorite in week 11, you have a better chance of advancing with both teams winning than if you take Cincinnati this week and Dallas next week. It, it just, it's just fact. That, that, that's just what the odds are. So now, t- t- talk for a second about why we don't like Cincinnati this week. So since, uh, Cincinnati is probably the worst. It might be the worst pick of the year so far if, if you take Cincinnati. I, I, haven't, I, don't, I haven't thrown that around that much, I feel. But this one's very clear. Everybody has Cincinnati available, I believe. Yeah, in this one point, I'm looking at 167 out of 171 have them. Look at the weeks that – they are heavily favored or you know, touchdown favored. They're a top five team in each of those weeks, 12, 14, 15. And when you do, re- when you use removal, this is why I, I, I plugged in, you know, a bunch of the most popular pick teams so far. You don't have a lot of those teams when you get to those weeks. In, in week 12, Detroit, Miami. Week 14, Baltimore, San Francisco, Detroit, Miami. A lot of repeats. Right. Week 15, San Francisco, New Orleans, Miami, right. yep. Cleveland. So yep. you, you need to have Cincinnati. And they're really highly picked. So th- this is actually really good. Yeah. To, uh, this is a clear fade save. And assuming everyone gets through, 30, 30% of the pool or so has used Cincinnati already. And it's a team that you everybody will be using them if they get past week 15 of these spreads. So you have to save them for later. Okay, so this this is what we're gonna do, and this we could do one of those uh, pause the videos, not, and I'll tell you when we're gonna do it in a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about my pool that we have doubles, okay? Because I think that's 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 interesting, okay? Yeah. All right. So so, and I want to just cross out the teams that we do not have available, okay? Okay. Teams that we use. So we took we we used Boston. That's uh, Boston. We used Buffalo. We used Baltimore last week. We lose. We used Seattle. Uh, we have San Francisco available. We uh, do you have Detroit available? We have New Orleans available. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you? Just, I, I'm I'm crossing these out as we go along. You, you've used it, okay? Because you, you switched the teams that I, I, from here, like Buffalo, Baltimore, Baltimore, Seattle. I can bring it by win percentage. So that's easier for you. No, uh, I have it alphabetically, but then you sort of okay. say the teams. And, and then, so. then, then, um, what you call then, then very importantly, and we did this on purpose, we already use Cincinnati, so we don't have to deal with that shit. 
Okay. So, so, so we, we, we don't have Buffalo. We don't have Cincy. We don't have Baltimore. We don't have Seattle. We have everybody else that's relevant on this board. So we have Dallas and then Chicago, Pitt, San Francisco, Detroit, New Orleans. Um, at, I think we might've been fortunate enough to use Atlanta yet. We no, we, we did not use Atlanta. Uh, we did not use Indianapolis. We did not use Tampa. We did not use Jets. Wow. Vegas. Yeah. So we, so we got, we got some bullets, you know, yeah, a um, lot, a lot of choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, first of all, remember that we have doubles coming up. So I, I, I'll just I'll just cut. I'm sorry, you have you have doubles every weekend right now. Time, yeah, right now, starting yeah, last yeah, yeah, yeah. week, and and all the whatever. Now keep something in mind. Remember, if you guys remember from last week, Detroit and Miami, uh, they're not they're not list. Miami's not listed here because I don't think they play this week or whatever. But Detroit, and Miami are like nobody has them left. Like sixty people have them left each. Okay, and we have them both. Okay. San Francisco, like only 20% of the people have them left. And we have and we have them. Okay. We faded the Detroit Miami chalk doubles a couple of weeks ago to, to deliberately set this this do you have Washington? We do not have Washington available. Okay. All right. Um do you have do you have Jacksonville? We have Jacksonville available. Um, In Cleveland. Let just let me just make sure that we do not have yeah, we use Washington week one. This was our this was our run out here. And we did actually use Atlanta. So Atlanta's not available. So, so the, the, the idea is this, okay? So we could either play Dallas or we, we do not play Dallas. Now, now, now here's, here's the story. Like in week 11, we have San Francisco, Miami, and Dallas. All San Francisco, Miami, nobody have a vet. Not nobody, but San Francisco, very, like 20% of people have them. And Miami, nobody has. So we have them. We could drop these on people in 11. Week 12, we could drop Detroit and nobody owns them, right? Now, here is the problem or the issue. If we use Dallas this week, which is nice, okay, then to pair with Detroit, okay, we have to do a couple of things, okay? We either can play Miami and Tennessee, who will be a billion percent owned, okay, in week 12, because right, right, no, every nobody will have Dallas left, no one will have Detroit left, ten, no one will have Cincinnati left because they're going to get stuffed this week. There might be a little Cincinnati, but everybody has Vi Vikings will be stuffed on in 12 as well, right? But then Tennessee and Minnesota will be popular, they not won't be as popular as another team we'll get to later, but Tennessee and Minnesota will be chalk, right? So the question is if we use Dallas this week, then we are either going chalk with our second pick with Tennessee, Minnesota, or dropping to some stuff like Indianapolis for our second pick in 12. That's if we use Dallas in week 10, okay? If we do not use Dallas now and do some of this, and by some of this, hopefully you see what I'm getting at here. So the San Francisco, New Orleans, Detroit, we're not using now because those are, those are hammers, okay, for later. If we decide to drop to Chicago, Pittsburgh for both of our picks, for example, okay, then if we want, we then can drop the whole universe on people and play San Francisco in uh, Dallas and Detroit in 12, San Francisco, Miami in 11, and just say, okay, guys, come and get me. Okay, But that takes a lot of risk in week number 10, like right now. So um, for us, there's a couple of questions, and one I hope people get right now. Um, if we use Dallas, the second team is going to be either Chicago or Pittsburgh, and I'll give people a quiz on which is the best one of those. But the overall question is, is maybe we don't use Dallas at all and just use Chicago and Pittsburgh. Now, that, what, what that does, that flies in the face of a, of a concept that I've talked about recently in that. If you have these low-owned hammers that you've been saving, like for week 11 and 12, Detroit, Miami, San Francisco, it's probably best to be conservative when all else is being equal so that you can drop those – you can have those bombs to drop on people. Um, uh, so, uh, so that's the overall concept is do we use Dallas with Chicago or Pitts, Pittsburgh, and we'll get to which one in a minute, 
or is it better to use Chicago and piss? Now, again, you're not, I know you haven't been part of the pool. You haven't been following all the stuff and, 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 you know, you got to get back into that doubles mindset, right. Of like the whole thing. Um, what what would you this is not for the public this is for for you like where what do you think you would do if you had that choice i mean i know probably what we're doing already but yeah i i would only take chicago if i'm taking dallas with them if i'm not taking dallas i would fade chicago because i think chicago is going to be much higher owned than you think but when we're taking Dallas, we are take half of our picks since it's doubles is it is going to be a very chalky team, albeit at a very high win percentage. Yep. If I'm dropping, I'm not going to drop to a team that might be. I'm just I'm I'm just ballpark. This is so tough. This is, I I would need to see the full pick uh, availability. Right. But Chicago's probably going to be over twenty percent, around twenty percent pick. I would think. And doubles. Well, th- some th- people are going to th- save th- Dallas oh, they're, they're, for eleven well, or They're 12. completely, they're completely usable. I mean, everybody's got, yeah, them. everybody's got them available. Here's well, the, it's just the, the teams team. above it: uh, Buffalo, Cincy, Baltimore, Seattle are are some of these are very sparsely, especially C- Cincinnati is going to be very chalky. But they, the thing is, they shouldn't. But Bears, everybody. Actually, got- no, that's not true. And I'm sorry. In this, for- I'm sorry. In this format, because you have doubles every week. Cincinnati is 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 a is a vi- is a very viable pick. So I guess you could take Chicago either way because you're you're fading Cincinnati because you don't have them available since this is doubles every week. My gut still says I would only take Chicago if I have Dallas because if I'm going to take if I'm going to drop and save Dallas, I would rather fade Chicago as well and fade Pittsburgh. But if you're doing that. I mean, this I wouldn't. I wouldn't even do this. You're looking at Indianapolis and Tampa Bay, and that's that's two fifty percenters. You're only winning twenty five percent of the time. So I would always take Dallas, and I and I would take Chicago with them. Okay, what I would do, that's but I would right. not. So, but but so, if you're dropping, I would not take Chicago. Okay, so but, that's 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 very that pretty much pretty much on point there. The the other question I have for everybody else is okay. Let's say Dallas didn't exist, so we're pay, we're, we're 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 taking Dallas. Let's say we're taking Dallas, and it's between Chicago and Pittsburgh, for example. And we talked about this a lot. And and let's just say even that um, that they're going to be. Let's say they are going to be equally owned this, just for the hell of it. Okay? Um, let's say they're going to be equally owned. You know, what would you guys think? about in this particular pool remember it's doubles every week i think it's sort of interesting which one of these would you use now and which one would you save now i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a hand we'll give you kind of a little bit of a here's here the, here's the relevant questions so pittsburgh this is what they look like in week 13 for example okay um now let's look at what um uh, who's the other team I was thinking of? Uh, Chicago looks like in week, what was it, 16? Yeah, in week 16. That's the only time that you can think about using Chicago, like in week 16. Maybe, maybe not even. Okay. Um, so considering that Pittsburgh in week 13 is going to look like this, you know, which team would you rather use now? Chicago or Pittsburgh. Now, again, you guys could pause the video or whatever you want. And this is something that we've talked about quite a bit. And I'm going to just talk, talk you guys through this. You know, if, if you, if you knew how to root survivor good, just a little bit, you would say, okay, well, I'll just say Pitt, right? Play Chicago, say Pitt. Why would I not want to play Pitt? I mean, they're going to be in week 13, double picks. I'm going to need something. You know, why, why don't I play that? Okay. Be, because, all right. If you thought that Dallas is going to be 50% on 40% on this week in week 13, like the combination of Pittsburgh and Tampa, they're going to be like legitimately like 80% on each. It's going to look like, it's going to look like last week. It it is going to look exactly like last week. Okay. So, so Pittsburgh is just nothing you want. While you think now you're going to want something to do with them. You're going to want nothing to do with them. Yeah, it's it's the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So so that's that's 
So, so that's, that's, that's a really important point. Even you guys are out of pool. I don't know if you guys are listening still, if you're out of pools, but it's a really, really important point of like, why, even though Pittsburgh, you know, listen, if you sort of looks like a save in 13, so you'd want, you know what I mean? Whatever. Um, it, it's actually, you really don't want to play Pittsburgh. Okay. So, so in that sense, um, you probably want to play Pittsburgh now because you, you're really not going to use them in the future. But I, I'm still, but, but the problem is, is that, and then, then it's back and forth because on the one hand you have Pittsburgh, who's probably going to be lower owned, but then again, you have Chicago who's a little bit more favored. You know? <laughs> so it's, it, it is definitely, it's definitely a tough call. Um, but what I think we're going to end up doing, and this is, I think is kind of fun, right? So Look, you, you, you I, I do want to make a comment about Pittsburgh for singles. So do we it. do that now or, or, or yeah, go, or go for it. Go for it. So this sounds contradictory to I agree with Eric fully that Pittsburgh is an automatic fade especially in doubles in 13 they're going to be a fade as well in singles in 13 for sure but because Pittsburgh has a much better record than Chicago and they're much and they're infinitely more likely to be playing more meaningful games toward the end of the season I would rather between Chicago and Pittsburgh, I would rather in singles take Chicago, assuming the pick percentages are going to be equal because Pittsburgh has a better chance of being a team that you'd actually pick it toward the end of the season. If Baltimore's locked in and Pittsburgh's, you know, going for a playoff spot, they could be a nice favorite even at, at Baltimore. If Seattle's season's over and they're trying out somebody else and Pittsburgh needs to win, it's, yeah, it's at Seattle, but these spreads can cha- will change dramatically when teams start sitting down players and uh, starters and trying other players, especially quarterback positions. So I would I would take Chicago over Pittsburgh in singles, assuming that the percentage are equal, which I guess it looks to be kind of that case. But you cannot get to week 13 and then take Pittsburgh. You, you at these spreads, you're going to have to fade them and just yeah. and just save them for later. But here, here's like an interesting, another like kind of like funny, fun dynamic is that the structure of this pool is that even though it's doubles, we don't have to make all of our picks like at once. Now, now here's the thing: Chicago is a um, is a Thursday game, okay? Chicago is a Thursday game. Um, so what we're we could do, which we're probably going to do is just is start with Chicago <laughs> and then just kind of, we get a chance to see how popular they actually were, you know, like after we play, yeah. you know, so if we played Chicago and it turns out. Winter, winter picks do buy on Sunday uh, at noon kick or when the game starts. Uh, at the, uh, at, at noon actually, at one o'clock actually. So we don't get a chance to get a look at the one o'clock games. But we get oh, that'd a, be incredible. Yeah, but we get to look get, get, Yeah, because Cowboys play at three twenty. Yeah, but we get, to, we get, we get to look at the, uh, we get to look at the Thursday games. Um, um, so the point is, is that like if we we could play, we could play. Um, uh, what's his name? We could play Chicago, and if it turns out they were twenty five percent owned, and we didn't really make any headway, I don't know. Maybe we reserve the right to go play Pittsburgh, you know, alongside of Chicago. You know, it's I know it's not it's not it's the same thing, but 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 when you have the Chicago in the bag already, maybe feel a little more emboldened to take the shot. And, no, I agree. Uh, see, I, I had no idea you played on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, if I was in, I would be fully aware of that. Yeah. I would one hundred. I would one hundred percent take Chicago and double picks because I. I just think Thursday is an under is a yep. nobody, very under nobody wants very to. underpick game. Some, I mean, some people don't even think about it until the weekend, and if they're not thinking about it, that means they can't no. pick it. So and it's not, Chicago and, that, and Pittsburgh are pretty equal. And not only that, but I mean, listen, in fairness, I mean, there's something to be said about waiting for, for possible stuff to happen to cause some line value. You know what I mean? So it's not exactly the worst idea in general to fade Thursday games. Right. Um, but hey, listen, if it's going to keep my ownership down of a team. I'm going to probably play anyway. You know, that's, 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 yeah. that's, that's, that's yeah, extra bonus. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll end up with either Chicago, Dallas, or if we're feeling, I mean, maybe we'll end up feeling frisky. And playing Chicago Pit after all, because let me tell you this: if you can get away, if we get away with Chicago Pit, for example, then it's like then then we got all kinds of 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 bombs to drop on people. Then we get Dallas and Miami and San Francisco and Detroit. 
We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not worried. Yeah, see, I, I think it's, compl- I think that's completely unnecessary because you're, you're probably right. <laughs> th- th- this is, I, it, it looks more or less very clear. What I would do in your pool, I would take Dallas, Chicago, and then I, I'm going to cross these teams out as I go along. In week 11, I would take San Francisco and Miami. They're also the two highest favorite teams. The next one's Dallas, which will be heavily used this week. The next one after that is Washington, who's been, who was picked in week one. And then there's Detroit and Buffalo. And, you know, pe- there'll be mo- some people will have to be taking that Jacksonville, Cleveland, Houston group will be very heavily picked and you'll be way above it with uh, Miami and San Francisco. Week 12, Detroit's an automatic. And then, you- you're probably – this is where it gets a little bit hairy. You're, yeah, you're going you're gonna to have to go – at current spreads, you're going you're gonna to have to go Rams or Indianapolis or New England because Tennessee and Minnesota, you could win it right there. If they both lose at these spreads, it's the same thing this past week when they were both seven and a half. In doubles, Tennessee and Minnesota are like 100% available, and they're, they're going to be smashed. But week 13 is, is your win week. You're you're ne- you're never going to take Pittsburgh or Tampa Bay. You got Kansas and as City. Long- and okay, you have so you, you have Kansas City, you have the Chargers, right? I mean, everybody has the Chargers, but no, we do not. Them. We burn the Chargers. You burn the Chargers, okay? Uh, Thirteen's char- no bargain. Okay, no, no char- Chargers. Chargers have been used about sixty percent in this one point I'm looking at. But the the the, the point is, at these spreads, Pittsburgh and Tampa are going to be the chalkiest teams. And they only have a you know, they have win odds of like what sixty five percent at 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 best. So you just got to be on neither one of them, and you're going to pick between Tennessee, Houston, L.A. Rams. Well, it'll be Tennessee and, and because out. it'll be Tennessee because Tennessee will be pounded in twelve. You know what I mean? Correct. Yeah, so, correct. So that, that's what would end up being. And listen, and then me. and then week fourteen you have New Orleans, that's and correct. then you have Pitt, and then you have uh, you have Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh will be picked this week, and that's it's thirteen, correct. and then that's you have correct. fourteen. And then and by, by then, I imagine the pool is over. But we will we'll see. What I mean, that's just a gr- that's a great path. You have you have you have a lot of uniqueness and in, uh, in that path, and yeah. you're fading yeah. the stone shock multiple times. Yep, and. You're not dropping every single time. You're, you have the two biggest favorites in week 11. Yep. And then in one week, you're just going to have to drop to the threes and just hope yep. it works out. Yep. Um, a couple I, more comments for singles. If you it. don't have Dallas, yep. you need to take Seattle. We talked about that a couple well, weeks no one, ago. Well, I don't think anybody's got Seattle, do they? Well, remember, remember, there are a few people in this one pool that I'm looking at. Not eight people have them left. Okay. So okay. two weeks, two weeks ago, before the Giants, I mean, the Dallas Giants spread was like nine or it was like nine or ten a couple weeks ago, and Seattle was automatic. If you had Seattle left, now if you have Dallas, it's not automatic. But if you don't have Dallas, Seattle, Seattle is not an automatic pick in, in, in any format. Their next, you know, attractive looking game is not till seventeen. Another note I have is if you've already taken New Orleans, don't take Baltimore. I wrote that down. Yeah, Baltimore. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it, it's because of week uh, 14. And if uh, before you consider taking Buffalo, look at week 17. Uh, to see what, see what you're looking at there. Surprisingly, I, one thing that really stuck out to me is how many people have Philadelphia left in, I, I guess there just haven't been a lot of weeks. They've won every game except for one, but in the pool that I'm looking at, like 10 teams have been taken more than, than Philadelphia has. And that means when it gets to week, uh, what, 16, 17, everyone's going to be better, you know, better, you know, place in their Philadelphia's and that, and that, I guess no one's, no one's going to take Philadelphia until 16, 17, 18 oh. either. So mm-hmm. everybody who has them is going to have them till there. So if you don't have Philadelphia, you need to start considering what your, your backup options are. And this is where it gets very, very important. I, like I, I dove really deep last week, like ranking three point favorites and it, and it, and it seems very tedious, but, when you start removing 
the teams that you that you do not and you probably won't have available in these latter weeks, you want to have as many options as possible. I have been in pools. They were doubles at the end of the season where people were taking underdogs because they just had to. And, and that's what happens, especially in doubles. So you really want to look at those three and four point favorites, even in singles, because you you'd like to have more than one choice because when they start sitting players and, 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 you know, teams just hang it up for the year. All of a sudden, you, you have you have one good – oh, I have this team. Well, they lose two games in a row, they're out of the playoff race, and then, bam, you don't, you don't need that team anymore. It, it, that's why you want the cream of the crop because the cream of the crop, they're playing for the division, they're playing for the, for the number one seed. And, and when, when you bank on holding a team that might only win nine or ten games, if they fall short – and they're out of the playoff race. Well, now that that team that you've been holding isn't really worth anything anymore. It's it, it, it's it's worth nothing. All right, everybody. Um, we will uh, listen. Please, everybody, keep come, coming with the comments in the Discord. And if anybody's alive and stuff, you know, feel free to feel free to ask advice, whatever. But try to be as specific as possible with with what with what you got. Yeah. If you have any questions, I'll I'll, I'll take a look at every every day or so. Yeah. Include the teams that you took. If, I, I will. If, if you take the time to include all the teams that you took. Yeah. Then then, then I'll, I'll eliminate those teams from, from Survivor Grid. I'll say what I you know what I would do. Um, obviously, I can have a very aggressive approach, uh, but, you know, include all so many people are left. If you if, if I think I'm just going to assume your pool is going to go the distance or near the distance. If there's 20 people left. Include that. So I don't you know give you something, you know, it's, you know, some, something crazy. All right, man. Good luck, and I'll catch up to you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Later.